Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Muscle grows extremely, extremely fast. And even though I mentioned that in several videos, people still underestimate how fast this process actually takes place. Now, obviously, it's going to take you a long time to notice the results, but the actual growth process is extremely rapid. And in most people, it's actually done in less than a day or two. But anyway, this is another episode of Sunday Study. So we're going to take a look at some quick studies and what they have to do with uh, all these pictures here. But anyway, First, quick review on how muscles actually build. If you're a lifter, you're trying to put on gains, you have to understand this process, guys. It's only two steps. If you understand these two steps, you go for the rest of your life, right? First, you have a trigger, right, which is obviously lifting weights or steroids, which obviously I don't recommend on this channel. But anyway, so step one is DNA transcription, right, guys? For you to build muscle, your body has to go to your DNA, find out the genes related to whatever proteins your body's trying to build, and your body has to copy those instructions it's that simple right so dna transcription in a nutshell is simply your body going to your dna finding the specific genes it needs in this case you're just trying to build a bigger bicep so you need contractile proteins and stuff it makes a copy of it and it translates it that's it that's how muscle is built it's literally two steps right it's obviously way more complex than that but to keep this video short just memorize those two steps guys you have dna transcription dna translation right when you transcribe dna you make a copy of the gene right mrna and eventually your body takes the amino acids that you eat, right? The protein from your diet, whatever, puts it together along with water, energy, blah, 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 blah. Boom. You build muscle. Now, this entire process takes place in less than a day or two. So every single thing you do to build muscle, whether it's lifting weights, increasing volume, eating, it falls down to these two steps here, right? You're either increasing DNA transcription. That's where testosterone comes in. That's where lifting heavier loads comes in, right? Or you're increasing translation right that's where volume comes in right that's why i recommend high weekly volume and all these things right the more volume that you do the more you increase the dna translation rna translation and obviously people who are on steroids they're increasing both step one and step two right step one is where the androgen receptor comes in but anyway this whole process takes place in less than a day or two and study after study after study after study after study after study after study have confirmed this right whether you looked at myofibular protein synthesis, mixed protein synthesis, it doesn't matter, right? It takes less than a day or two. Now, keep in mind, this is after you recover from muscle damage, right? So, obviously, if you're a, beginner, you're a noob, first time in the gym, it's obviously going to take a, a little longer than a day or two simply because your body has to first repair the damage and wait for the repeated body effect to kick in. But for the average person watching this video, if you've been lifting for a long time, this whole process peaks in less than a day or two, right? In fact, in less than 24 hours, you get a peak and eventually it starts to decline back to baseline extremely fast. Now, if you're on steroids, obviously, you're going to keep protein synthesis elevated, right? So it's still going to decline, but not as fast as somebody was natty, right? So if you're on the juice, it's going to peak, obviously, right? And stay elevated. That's why, again, that's why bro splits became very popular once steroids came into the picture, you know, in the 1960s, right? Because then you could train your chest on fucking Monday, and wait until the next fucking money to get it again, and you still grow. Why? Because you're keeping protein synthesis elevated. If you're a natty, you don't have that fucking advantage. Your body's going to synthesize as much protein as possible, and it's going to drop back to baseline extremely fast. Now, guys, you got to understand, the reason why this process is so fast is because even if you're putting on a pound of muscle a month, which is a ton of muscle, by the way, you know, if, you, if you're putting a pound of muscle a month after, your, um, after you've been training for a long time, you are fucking blessed. But... Even a pound of muscle, that's only 15 grams of muscle a day, if you think about it, right? If your body's building in, in you know, uh, at a constant rate, which obviously it's not, but, you know, to make the math easier, it's about 15 grams a day, right? It doesn't take that long to make 15 grams of muscle. And if you look at it from a protein standpoint, only about 20% of that is protein, which is about three grams of protein a day. That's it. Three grams of protein a day comes out to a pound of muscle a month. So that's why this process is extremely fast. Now, of course, the reason why we don't notice the gains is because, I mean, again, if you put on 15 grams of muscle, you can't see that shit, right? So what eventually gets you big is the constant spikes of protein synthesis from workout after workout after workout. That's why it takes years to achieve a great physique is because you have to keep protein synthesis elevated day after day after day, week after week, month after month, right? So even though the process is extremely, extremely fast, it takes a long time to see results because, it, like I said, 50 grams of muscle a day, you can't fucking see that shit, right? But if you keep protein synthesis elevated and you synthesize those tissues day after day after day after day, you're going to see results faster. And that's why once you adjust for time, again, back to the video that I made last week, nucleus overload, high frequency training combined with blood flow restriction or not, destroys every other method of training when it comes to building muscle fast. Keep in mind, I say time adjusted, right? So if time is an issue, Higher frequency is the key. Now, keep in mind, if you don't train with high frequency, you're still going to put on muscle. 
it's just going to take you longer, right? So you're both going to reach the exact same genetic limit as uh, uh, whether you're doing a bro split or a full body, whatever. You're all going to reach the same genetic limit. But one person is going to get there faster. The person, again, who's training more frequently because he's keeping protein synthesis elevated. Or the person who's obviously on steroids. Why does it take only a day or two for your body to build muscle? Why is it so fast? I told you guys, all the growth factors and all the things that are linked to hypertrophy peak after 24 hours, some less than 24 hours. From the spike in IGF-1, from androgen receptor binding, the decrease in myostatin, the increase in phyllostatin, mTOR activation, all of those things, the increase in blood flow, all of those things peak in less than 24 hours for the train lifter, the person who's been training for a long time. And are we surprised? We were hunters and gatherers for tens of thousands of years, guys. The body had to find quick ways to adapt to the load, the daily load, depending on what your daily activities were. If you were primarily a hunter, the body had to adapt quickly, guys. Your body couldn't say, hey, you know what? We can only hunt on Monday and then we have to wait until next Monday to do all that exhaustive work. Hell no. The body had to find quick ways to adapt, depending on your daily activities. That's why if you look at some hunter-gatherer tribes who are still alive to this day, the best hunter is usually jacked as shit. For example, this is from the Namal tribe. Look at the best hunter in the group. He is ripped like a motherfucker. Keep in mind, these guys are not bodybuilders. They're not on steroids. They're in the fucking forest somewhere. And the daily hunting, the for example, guys, you know how hard it is to use a bow, like an actual strong bow? Pulling that shit requires so much fucking strength. Your biceps come into play, your rhomboids, your mid trapezius. I mean, look at his traps, guys. Best hunter in the group. Not only requires extreme strength to pull the bow, but also you have to carry the prey, bring it back, climb the trees. Some of these guys, especially guys who have a high protein diet. Again, the best hunters usually have the high protein diet, right? So he's not going to go and, and fucking hunt on Monday and say, oh, you know what? My traps are sore. My rhomboids are sore. My biceps are sore. I'm going to wait until the next fucking Monday before I go on a hunt again. Fuck no, right? This tribe is gonna fucking starve. Especially if they run out of berries and plants and shit. But anyway, I'm gonna make a separate video and showing you guys the life of uh, hunter-gatherers. Again, same thing with Neanderthals, right? The reason why they were so much more jacked, I explained before, not, you know, uh, Northern Latitude and all that stuff, Bergman's Rule. But also, these guys were 90% plus carnivores, right? Hunting was their main way of getting food. Because obviously in Ice Age Europe, you're not gonna find berries every day. You're not gonna find plants and fruits every day. So they were getting the majority of the calories from hunting, which is an extreme full body workout, especially the, the animals these guys were hunting, you know, mammoths and woolly rhinos and shit. That's a full body workout, right? Their forearms, their biceps, their back, their legs, everything was activated, right? And the body just can't afford to take fucking seven days to recover from a hunt because these guys had to carry the food back home. If they were successful, they could take a break. If they were not successful, which, again, most hunts were not successful, they had to go all the way back the next day, over and over again. That's why the body has evolved to recover faster than most people think. That's why if you notice, whenever you start doing nucleus overload or high-frequency training, at first you sore as shit, right? But the repeated bowel effect kicks in so fast that after a while, you recover like the very next day. It's as if you didn't even fucking lift. The body is made to adapt, guys. Same thing with these buff-ass chimps, right? You guys are already familiar with these pictures. I might do a fun fact Friday on that. But pretty much when chimps have alopecia and they lose their hair, you get to really see how jack chimps are. And why didn't they have so much muscle? Yeah, of course, they also have more fast twitch muscles than humans. But remember, these guys are constantly swinging from trees and shit. So they're doing lap pull downs and fucking, you know, one arm rolls and one arm pull downs every fucking day, man. And we know it's because of the, of the activity that they look so jacked. Because when the, when the chimp is... Um, immobilized whether they're you know they're, they're sick or they're injured or uh, they're not allowed to uh, they're, they're put into an environment where they can't swing all day they lose a ton of muscle mass a ton so that's how you know it's not just a genetic thing it's not just oh chimps are just buff just naturally no they're buff because of their daily activity because once you remove that and it's the same for chimps the same for rats the same for for every animal out there they lose a ton of muscle mass the moment you take them out of their normal environment out of their normal daily activities when it comes to chimps it's obviously swinging on trees and vines and shit look at this shit man look at his delts look at his biceps carrying their entire body weights from tree to tree and if you look at humans the reverse is also true right when people when astronauts go in space one of the first things that happen is they lose a ton of muscle mass why do you think that is there's no gravity in space see people think that our legs are naturally big just just because they're supposed to be big no your legs are big because you walk on them bitches all day they've done experiments where if you just go into space where there's no gravity in less than two weeks you lose a ton of muscle your legs come back looking like Smeagol. So our legs are not big because they're just naturally big. They're big because we walk on them bitches all day. Tension. And the reason why they don't just keep growing forever is because obviously you're not progressively overloading, right? You're not, you know, adding weight to your to your fucking back every day. But 
If you did, your legs would get bigger and bigger. Why do you think fat people have big ass calves? Their calves grow in proportion to their increase in weight, right? Same thing if you try to lie down on the bed all day. Try to lie down for a week or two weeks without walking at all. You will lose a ton of muscle. Take a chimp and stop him from swinging for several weeks at a time. He loses all these fucking gains. So these fuckers are doing nucleus overload every fucking day. And you guys remember the video I made about Burton last year, right? Very, very inspiring guy. Lost the use of his legs. So pretty much he was using his legs like a straight badass. Using his arms to replace his legs. So he would literally just walk on his arms. Carrying the weight of his entire body every single day. And the result? He developed massive triceps. Because obviously he's pretty much doing nucleus overload every day if you think about it. And huge ass forearms. Because that's literally his new legs. Watch the video. Watch that video that I made. It's insane. He's so inspiring. He was like, "Fuck a wheelchair. I'm gonna walk on my fucking arms." And his arms blew the fuck up. And he barely goes to the gym. Guys, anything that keeps protein synthesis elevated day after day, which is mechanical tension, day after day, is gonna rapidly increase muscle growth, right? And speaking of gyms, guys, why do you think gymnasts who specialize in ring work, right? Because remember, not all gymnasts specialize in ring work, but the ones who do, most of the ones who do. Have huge ass fucking biceps. Now I don't know what you're gonna say, oh, they're on steroids. Guys, every athlete is on fucking steroids, right? At the top level, they're all on steroids, right? But yeah, they don't all have fucking biceps like this. Right? These guys are doing, and I mentioned them in my nuclear solo videos years ago, right? These guys are literally doing bicep work every fucking day. This is pull-ups, right? And they have better biceps than some bodybuilders out there. Again, keeping protein synthesis elevated. Right? They don't do ring work on Monday and say, Oh, oh uh, uh my biceps are sore, let me come back next Monday. No. They're switching back and forth between different exercises that still activate their arms one way or another. Same thing with strongman. I was talking about strongman and their big ass traps, right? 90% of strongman exercises are trap exercise. They're always lifting heavy ass shit off the ground, right? And the result, they have bigger traps than most bodybuilders. Yes, of course, I know you're going to mention, oh, traps have high androgen receptors. We know that. But again, not everyone who abuses steroids has big traps. In fact, there are a ton of bodybuilders who, again, take huge doses of steroids and have shit traps. You know what I'm talking about. Have you seen Kai Green's traps? Ben Pakoski? You think these guys don't take steroids? So it's a combination of obviously the drugs, but also the activity. Constantly lifting heavy shit off the ground. Keeping protein synthesis in the traps super elevated from the steroids and the constant lifting. The farmer walks, the deadlifts, the stones. And the other example I always mention, right? Ballerinas and their fuck ass calves. I mean, ballerinas have calves of peace, especially the ones who've been doing it for a long time. What are you gonna tell me? They're all on steroids too? It's just calf work, man. Every single day, keeping protein synthesis elevated. Track cyclists, especially the ones who specialize in the sprint events, right? The majority of them have huge squats. Obviously, not all of them look like this fucking monster here, right? But the majority of them have mega developed quads. Why? Because every fucking day is leg day. They're either on the bike, or they're doing leg work in the gym, and then back on the bike again, keeping protein synthesis elevated. And if these guys decided to just stop riding and focus on bodybuilding, you guys know what will happen. They will build monster fucking quads. So conclusion, guys, muscle is built extremely fast. You just have to keep elevating protein synthesis, right? Most of you fuckers still train the muscle once a day, and you wonder why it's taking you so long to grow. Again, if you're on the juice, TRT, or you have insane genetics, fine, by all means. But for the rest of the population, the rest of us, you have to keep elevating protein synthesis. Again, as long as you recover from muscle damage, right? Usually after three weeks of lifting, um, the repeated body effect kicks in fully and, and muscle damage is no longer an issue, right? As long as you don't overdo it in the gym. That's why I would say try not to do too much in the gym, right? Just do enough to stimulate protein synthesis and get the fuck out, right? Because you're going to be back there very soon. But if you go to the gym and you do fucking 50 sets per body part in one day, you're going to create way more muscle damage and actually slow down your progress. Because remember, guys, muscle protein synthesis only increases muscle size once damage is recovered. All right? So if you create too much damage, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. But anyway, that's it, guys. And remember, guys, if you're doing high-frequency training or full-body training or nucleus overload or whatever the fuck you want to do, right? anything that involves high weekly volume, high frequency, there's a big drawback. Your recovery management has to be on point. I repeat that over and over again, right? So don't forget the top 10 rules of nucleus overload or any high frequency program you want to undertake you have to manage recovery well else you're actually going to lose gains all right see you guys in the comment section all right guys don't forget to like or share the video subscribe and hit the bell and buy my hsp nucleus overload training program it's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth it includes full body workout splits bro splits push pull home workouts you name it also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience 
condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.